Good morning. Welcome to Kilfly South Baptist Church. My name's Di. Being a nurse, this week I had a little bout of night duty and after finishing my last night, don't tell anyone, but I dropped by Macca's and picked up myself a cheeky sausage and egg McMuffin. Now I can tell you just how good it is to know that after finishing your stint of night duty, you're headed home to flannelette sheets to spend a cold day in bed sleeping and enjoying a sausage and egg McMuffin on the way home is the best feeling. Have you had a moment like this <laughs> this week where you felt and pondered gratitude for something? Perhaps um, maybe it was watching your kids playing well together or marvelling at nature doing its thing outside. Maybe it was being energised and grateful for an interaction with a friend. These are all good things. And a well-recognised strategy for maintaining good mental health is to have an attitude of gratefulness in all things. Speaking honestly, as a Christian, I can very often forget to contemplate the meatier and chunkier magnitude of what Jesus has achieved for me in the form of salvation and the peace that overarches my life here on earth by knowing who is victorious and currently in charge, not to mention knowing exactly where I'm headed when I'm not here anymore. If you have joined us this morning and don't know Jesus and would like to know more about the peace and hope that I'm speaking of, please get to our website and get in touch with us. This is really, really, really important. I want to read this morning from Ephesians chapter 2 in the message version of the Bible. It says this. Immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God has us where he wants us. With all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role here. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he's gotten ready for us to do, work we had better be doing. What a great God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held by your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God No 
known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so
Why don't we pray? Our Lord, we've just sing, been singing about how great, how good you are. Hallelujah. Praise the one who has set us free. You are a good, good God. Lord, we sing your praises because you are worthy of them. We give you thanks and praise, God, for who you are. Our Lord, at this time, we know we can't get out and we can't see our loved ones. We're reminded that it was Are You OK Day throughout this week. And Lord, I want to pray for those who are really struggling today, struggling with that loneliness, perhaps a loneliness of spirit or a loneliness of physicality, God, that you will be with them. Our Lord, we pray for those who are really wrestling with with mental health struggles. We think of those who have lost business, lost their finances, where the future looks bleak. We think of the year 12s, God, who are starting to think about exams, And God, we just ask that you will stay with them, that you will be with them, that you'll be their strength and their hope as they study, as they look at other past exams, as they head out into these exams, that that you will be with them, that you will give them strength. Now God, we pray for uh, each household that is represented here on these screens today. We ask our Lord that you be with each one of them. And God, I pray a blessing over the neighbours that are around them as well. May they know through the people from this church that you are Lord. May they see you and your goodness through them. And God, may we know that love, how great, how deep, how wide the love of the Father is. Now, God, we give you thanks and praise because you are good and your love, your mercy, your grace endures forever. Amen. Well, it's great to be with you this morning. My name's Peter. I am one of the pastors here at the church. And if you're new here, welcome. It's so good to have you online with us. I want to say hi to those who are watching from Glen Golan today as well. It was so good to see you on Thursday as Pastor Jeanette and the team ran the service there and saw that you were watching. It was fantastic to be a part of that. So thanks for being a part of KSBC. This week, Di alluded to it at the start of the service. Uh, this thankfulness is really important. Gratefulness is important. And this week, I was really grateful for a friendship that I have. I was able to spend time on Zoom with one of my friends, a close friend, chatting about life and anything else that came up. I was really blessed by that conversation. I was also blessed by the laughter that came out of our family games that we play together and and just the joy that playing games with my family gives. I was blessed to sit eating lunch in the sun with my family the other day. And, and I'm blessed that, that God has given me uh, just so much this week. I wonder if you look back over your week, regardless of the downs, I wonder where the ups have been. I wonder what you're thankful for this week. Feel free in the chat just below uh, the screen here. Uh, if you're on your computers or you're on your phone or on your iPad, just, just write in the chat some of the things that you've been thankful for this week. We'd love to hear about it. Now, this week we're going to be starting to, or we're going to be talking about uh, the need for community in small groups. And we're going to watch a video in a little while from the Skit guys who will, will help us understand small groups a little bit. But um, what, what I want to sort of share before we look at that is that a, a, a group, a connect group, a small group, whatever you want to call it, we call it connect groups here at KSBC, is a place where you can find a deep sense of belonging. And we're going to look through that in our sermon today. Um, but maybe it's something you've been thinking about. I want to get into a connect group. I want to get into a group of, of like-minded people to study Scripture, to belong together. 
you might want to consider that. Hey, get, head to our, our website and you can uh, find a little tab up the top called Connect. And you'll be able to write an email. I think there's a, a group uh, sort of page as well. And you can say, I want to be part of a Connect group. In a month's time, we're going to be starting a new series called Shape. And it's going to consider what shape your shape for ministry is. It will become clearer as we move towards it. But we'd love to see new connect groups or more people connected into groups uh, before this series so that, that you can, together as a church, we can run through this series called Shape. Even if you think, I can't, I can't commit to it, um, just go to our webpage again and just go, I want to connect for those six weeks. Uh, ksbc.org.au forward slash connect and you'll be able to put your details in and hopefully uh, get involved in a group for this upcoming series. We'd love to be able to do that uh, as a group together, as a church. Um, if you want more information about what groups there are or who's in groups or whether you could start your own even or thinking about uh, you might have a couple of friends that you think oh, I could maybe facilitate a group together you might want to get in touch with myself or Pastor Jeanette or Lynn Sykes to be, uh, explore those opportunities we're really passionate about connecting people to each other. Uh, and for the foreseeable future, this is groups, smaller groups, is going to be the way that we find our sense of belonging. A few other announcements that are really important. Uh, next Thursday, the 16th of September at 7.30 till 8.30, there is a Zoom women's event, Refresh and Reconnect. The link is on the Facebook group page and it was in last week's care link if you need it that came out of, uh, via email. If you're having trouble finding those links, contact the church office admin at ksbc.org.au and we'll get, uh, make sure those links get sent to you. I encourage all of you women to get online and enjoy that connecting together again. Baptist World Aid is still accepting money to help the displaced people in Afghan, Af Afghanistan. If you would like to give to Baptist World Aid uh, and to this Afghanis Afghanistan project, you can go to their website and you'll be able to uh, give through the website. If you're struggling to get to Baptist World Aid's website and their systems, you can send money through the church, label it for Afghanistan, and we'll make sure it gets to the right place. You can do that through our website once again and go to the Give uh, tab on the top bar. You'll see it there. You can also give of your tithes and offerings to KSBC through that as well. You can give it straight directly through the banks or you'll be able to set up a direct debit there. Throughout this time, the church continues to serve in new ways. The pastors and the staff are continuing to reach out to as many people as we can. And, and we're endeavouring to lead in this church in the direction that God is calling us to lead. It might be unclear now, but we're praying for you. And if you want any of the pastors or the prayer team to specifically pray for you, please feel free to use the prayer tab on our website or call one of the pastors. We'd love to chat with you. I've started to hear about how some of you have been blessed by um, blessing your neighbours around you as well in recent weeks. I urge you to continue to do this. Find new ways to be a blessing. It doesn't have to be much. Be creative in how you do it. I want to let you know we also have a, a small grant here at KSBC that can help bring to life your blessed dream for, for someone, whether it's a neighbour or someone close to you. They're just small grants. So if you have a way to bless someone in and around, you write it down and send it through to admin at ksbc.org.au, admin at ksbc.org.au, with the idea and some sort of an expected cost. Grants will be up to $100, and, and grants are limited. We haven't got an, a, an unlimited pool of money. But um, if you have a way or you can think of a way to bless someone, and you, you need some finance to help do that, get in quick so you can do that for someone. I look forward to hearing the stories of how God is working through his people of KSBC to bless the wider communities. Hey, I hope you have a fantastic week. Um, we're going to watch a uh, Skit Guys video now that talks about connect groups, and then I'm going to preach all about belonging. Bless you. In the winter of 2008, Elroy Jacobs and his brother-in-law Wyatt entered the remote icy tundra of northern Saskatchewan to make a documentary film about social isolation. The team was never heard from again. Later that summer, 
Their footage was discovered by a group of caribou hunters. What you are about to see is that very same footage. It's a cold world out there, folks. And I'm not talking about global warming. I'm talking about the winter of the soul. I have no idea what you're talking about, but it is cold right here. It, it is cold. It's cold right here. And right here we are in the lovely northern Saskatchewan. Also known as Winter's Bedpan. We are here to experience the world at its coldest. A beautiful metaphor of how we have cut the heart of humanity and all we do is care more about ourselves than anything else than anybody else. Oh yes, my friends, it is cold. I have no idea what your flowery, artsy words mean. But I am freezing. <laughs> where can we find the warmth of community? Like what's found in the good book of 1 John 1, 7, where it says we must have rich, full fellowship, like that you'd find in a small group. Yes, let's go join a small group, one that meets indoors where it is warm right now. And lest I remind you of Romans 12, 16, where it says we must live in harmony. Which is just the opposite of what I'm about to do to you right now. And unlike my compadre right here, we must do what James 4.11 says, and we must speak with wholesome words to one another. Speaking of wholesome words, parents, please cup your children's ears, for I'm about to let go with a slew of words to express just how cold I am. I'm talking words that are generally reserved for hockey players and pageant moms. We gotta stop worrying so much about Botox and this, and there's an app for that, and texting instead of talking, and we want things now, 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 and Facebook until we're foul. All right, my friend, you're just proving my point here. You're just proving my point. No, I am calling 911. My phone is frozen. It doesn't work. I'm losing feeling in my lower extremities. Stand down. I just don't think people care anymore. Why don't you care about me? Don't get lost in the cold. Join a small group. It's what Wyatt and Elroy would have wanted. Belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something larger than us. Let me say it again. Belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something larger than us. Than us. That's a quote from Brene Brown uh, from her book Braving the Wilderness. Isn't it true that in us there is something that desires to belong? Starbucks, I don't know if you like it, love it, or hate it, Starbucks exploded not just offering customers a cup of coffee, but by giving them a comfortable and sophisticated environment in which to relax. Customers felt good about themselves when they walked into a Starbucks. Because Starbucks was delivering more than just coffee. They were delivering a, a sense of sophistication and enthusiasm about life. They were also offering a place for people to, to come and gather, to meet, in which they could experience some affiliation and belonging. Starbucks changed American culture from hanging out in diners and bars to hanging out in a local Italian-style coffee shop. In understanding how their customers wanted to feel, Starbucks took products, took a product, a basic product that Americans were used to paying next to nothing, 50 cents for, or drinking it for almost free at home or at work, and they were able to charge three or four dollars a cup. And Starbucks customers were willing to pay all of that because they had a greater sense of value every time they drank there. When I was at England, in England, Starbucks was a place that we would go to meet with friends. There were five other small cafes lots closer to us, but Starbucks was a place we ended up. It was comfortable. It was open. It was welcoming. It found in it a sense of belonging. That's where we wanted to be. Another place that's similar, very different but similar, is the neighbourhood pub. Uh, people find belonging at their pub. However, it's a slightly different way, isn't it? Unlike Starbucks or unlike a good church that works well in gathering people together, it, it deals in dispensing liquor and granting some sort of escape for many rather than a reality. 
But what it brings is this permissive, accepting and inclusive fellowship. In essence, it becomes unshockable. It becomes democratic. You can just about tell people your deepest, darkest secrets and they don't want to take that anywhere else. They just keep it to themselves. The, the bar, the pub flourishes, not because most people are sort of drinking too much or alcoholics, but because God has put in the human heart this innate desire to know and to be known, to love and to be loved. And so many seek something that looks like that. And so many people go and grab a few beers and are willing to pay to try and find that experience. See, both the local pub and Starbucks have, have flourished over one thing. And it's definitely not uh, a coffee, um, star- whether you like Starbucks coffee or not. It's definitely not cheap meals and a beer. It's all about belonging. Can we imagine in a post-COVID world, a church where every person, and when I say every person, I mean all people, regardless of race, affiliation, whatever. Can we imagine a place where people feel known, loved, and totally accepted? Can we imagine a place where we can say safely, I've, I've hit the bottom. I can't cope anymore. Help me. I know a place that that, that, that happens. It's called Alcoholics Anonymous. They've, they've nailed that, haven't they? <laughs> but, but Christ, Christ wants His church to be that place. I'm not suggesting that everyone come to church and share their deepest concerns with everyone on a Sunday morning from the stage. That, that's, that's one we're not allowed to uh, in COVID. But that's, that's not what we're asking. It would just be awkward. However, I believe that belonging lies on the very heart of God. Therefore, it must lie heavy on our heart, on the church's heart. The very foundations of who we are as people of faith tell us that we belong to God. We're part of His family. The very fact that the Trinity Trinity exists is, is that we have a triune Godhead, three in one. It points to the need of togetherness, the need of belonging that God is three in this triune dance that belong to one another. And the beautiful part of God's grace and God's great action of love and mercy to each of us is that we're all a part of that one body. We can join in this divine dance that we call the body of Christ. Let me read about Paul's message to the Corinthian church and what it means to be part of this body. This is from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 14. It's on your screen. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its part, many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we're all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. You know, within these three verses, three small verses, six times, we hear one. One body with Christ. We're baptized by one spirit to form one body. I remember uh, as a kid, I was watching a John Farnham concert. Anyone remember John Farnham? I was quite young and uh, he sang a song and it wasn't written by him, it was written by someone else, but it was called One is the Loneliest Number. (laughs) Great song, but that might be the case if you're sitting in a cinema on your own and you're the only one in the cinema in total. (laughs) But when the blockbuster night hits and the opening night hits and you, can, you, go, you go down to the cinema on your own, but the cinema's totally full. You're all in that movie together. See, when we're in Christ, though, one is the only number. You're part of this one body. You, you may be a, a foot or someone else is a hand. You may look different and, f- and function in different ways, but you're all part of one body. You belong, and you belong in Christ because we are one in Christ. And in verse 18, it tells us that God has placed the parts of the body, that's each one of us, every one of them, he doesn't exclude anyone, just as he wants them to be. 
Do you hear that? If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you are part of this wonderful thing called the body of Christ. And you are not just an add-on. You're not an unneeded part of the body. You're not like the, the wart dangling off someone's little toe or something like that. You're important. God has placed you just as he wants you to be. God says, you belong. You belong. In Christ, you belong. Can you hear that this morning? You belong. All Christians should feel a sense of belonging within the boundaries of the body of Christ. This is what the church is. This is how the church should act. A place where God's people are known by Him and known that they are loved by Him. Do you know that in Christ you are fully known and fully loved? There's a, a quote by uh, Jeremy Linneman in uh, a, a, an article he wrote for the Gospel Coalition. It said this, In Christ we can find true belonging. For true belonging is being simultaneously fully known and fully loved. Brene Brown, who I quoted at the start, continues her dialogue of belonging by saying that we learn f- for, uh, so much to belong that she says this, we often try to acquire it by fitting in and seeking approval. Belonging is being somewhere where you want to be and they want you. Fitting in is being somewhere where you want to be, but they don't care one way or the other. Belonging is being accepted for you. Fitting in is being accepted for being like everyone else. The body of Christ is not a place where people should just fit in. It's a place of belonging. Fully known, fully loved. Not because you have to act a certain way or be like a certain group of people. Fully known and fully loved is being accepted for who you are. One in Christ. Like I said earlier, this is difficult when we're not together physically. It is. It's tricky when we have a large congregation of people and we're not allowed to be here. But a healthy way for developing this belonging still, especially even in this COVID time, is to meet in smaller groups and to gather together, whether it be physically when we're allowed in smaller groups or via Zoom. We call them here at Kilsyth South Baptist Church connect groups. And in connect groups, this belonging to the body can actually begin to flourish and see uh, fruit grow from it. So, so I want to explore with you briefly, and we can expand on this another time. I want to explore four levels of connection for developing belonging within healthy connect groups. So these four levels of connection. The first level is that healthy groups have fun together. To have belonging with a healthy, within a healthy connect group, it's vital that the group can do exactly what the name says. They can connect. <laughs> Starting out in connect group, it can be difficult. And if you start a group and get down to the deepest parts on night one, it can be intimidating, can't it? We've probably all been there. Probably all had those experiences where we've been at a group and you just think, I don't know these people and they want me to share something deep, that's really tough. So it's important that a connect group can find a way to get to know one another through just having some fun. I know some groups have met on Zoom and had uh, chat nights and just time together and just fun nights. They've talked about whatever topic comes up, had some laughs. They've just enjoyed being online together. There's no agenda. It's just a catch up. I know some groups have connected in the past by going on camping trips or going to the park or whatever it may be. Some go out for a meal. Some invite people in for a meal. Watch a movie together. Those sort of things can produce a sense of belonging together. The point of it, though, is to find something where relational barriers can be broken. When barriers are broken through either laughing or doing something that we think, yeah, that was fun together, we become less intimidated about being open to one another. It's like the icebreaker at the start of a team building exercise. It's totally designed to make people more comfortable with one another. So it's important 
Even when you've been a group for a long time or a long time, having fun continues to solidify these relationships that have been built and allows others to integrate into the group in a non-threatening way. Belonging comes from having fun together. I wonder if you've got to think about a group that you might be in and say, how can we enjoy one another's company in the next couple of weeks? The second thing is healthy groups, they learn together. This is the next level of belonging. Many times connect groups or or small groups or whatever you've called them in the past, they, they often get boiled down to being a Bible study. And this next level of belonging moves into this, but it's not all of this. You know, the Bible study, the, the, the Scripture is vital that we have connection over Scripture. We must be able to study God's Word together and, and seek to really understand it, unpack it. Not just so that we can know it, but so that we can encourage one another to live out what God's Word says in our everyday lives. You know, studying Scripture together allows members of the group to share their own personal faith stories and and see how they intersect with God's Word. See, hearing one another's stories and experiences, how God intersects, intersects and speaks into people's lives, it develops this depth of faith together and a greater sense of belonging to one another and also to the body of Christ. We need to continue to study the Word together, to dig into the Bible together. The third level, going deeper, is that a healthy group serves together. 1 Peter 4.10 says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Each of you should use whatever gift you've received. Why? To serve others. We're all given gifts from God to use to build up the kingdom of God. And as faithful stewards, we we need to make sure we use these gifts. However, something special happens when we serve together in a, a small group or a connect group. Whether it's serving at church and being on a roster together, doing the morning tea together, or serving one another when someone's struggling, serving solidifies a group. It brings a group together for a cause that stretches beyond themselves. However, it actually is when a group looks outward and seeks to be a blessing to the neighbourhood around them that they're no longer just serving out of their own needs, but they start to open themselves up as a group to serving within a missional space and with a heart that is for God's mission, a heart that links into the very heart of God. You see, a few things happen when we serve missionally. We, we start to experience the closeness of the shared experience as we look beyond ourselves. And we start to think missionally and also evangelistically as we share our lives with others in our community. This level takes a, a bonding that takes a bonding of that fun that we started with, the depths of Scripture, and then of sharing faith as we move outside into the mission of God. I've got a video of, of um, Roger and Sheila. Jeanette is interviewing Roger and Sheila Rankin with Rosemary also, who are going to talk about some ways that they have supported and served one another in, and give an insight into how their group works in some of these ways. <laughs> Well, hi guys. It's lovely to see you guys. We catch up every, well, pretty much every Wednesday, I think it is now, because when um, my Connect group, or the group I'm part of, meet fortnightly, but then the ones in between, I'll set up a Zoom meeting for Roger and Sheila's group. So it's lovely to have Roger and Sheila here and Rosemary here today, and they're just going to share a little bit about uh their connect group and what it means to them and um, how life-giving that is and how they can show how they're showing care in these tricky times so um i know rosemary you experienced some of that care through um an incident that you had uh, earlier the, i think it was in this last the very first part of this last lockdown can you tell us a little bit about that i had a fall in my kitchen ended up in uh having five stitches and two very, very black eyes. Um, I'm still dealing with that. But 
in the meantime, you realise that you're not walking this line alone, mm -hmm. that friends in my home group, friends in the church knocked on my door and just handed me a meal. It made so, such a difference and um, so much care was given. And this is what it's all about. I do not like Zoom. I do not like technology. However, God has made it available for us so that we can encourage and uplift each other and see each other's face. And, um, you know, during the day I, I go for my walks and I always pray, God, bring somebody across my path who needs a word in season and never lets me down. Mm -hmm. I have some incre I've met some incredible people and I am just so happy that, yeah, lockdown's bad, lockdown's hard, it's difficult, but there are blessings in it if we look up and keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, thanks, Rosemary. That's true. And I'm sure people can ask you when we get back face to face or give you a call if they want to hear more about some of those stories. So that'd be great. Now, I know, Roger and Sheila, you've been um, really instrumental in connect groups, small groups, whatever you want to call them, for many, many years. And um, so, and I love the story and I, I may have shared it with some people about with you coming on to zoom and and last year your encounter with your doctor and diagnosis and all of that but that's all beside the point but um you know you guys are really passionate and as you said i think most of the people in your group um are no i'm not going to say an age but are seniors let's put it that way <laughs> not very senior. age students Mature yeah. age. Mature age students, yes. So, um, yeah, how, how are you finding it um, as as leaders in this, uh, as life-giving? Well, how's this giving you life and to, the, and to the rest of your group? Can you just share a bit about that? We, we take it as um, quite a privilege to be able to lead the group, and we did for many years, 12 years or so. Mm. Um, so it's good to see people grow. And we've seen them go from youth into adult groups and that's block movement of people. It's, it, it's, it's very gratifying. But the good thing about this, you know, this time with the Zoom is that uh, with them, um, because this group with, uh, with our, our ladies and uh, there's just six of us at the moment, uh, but we have been going for quite, quite a long time and now been able to, right from the beginning, of the Zoom, we've actually been able to meet. So it really was a big learning curve for us all. And we had some such funny times, you know, with the phone on the phone to each other, you know. With, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, you know, I'm talking them through and it, it worked out so well. But uh, like you say, we were really right in the beginning. Mm. You, you were helping us as well uh, to be able to meet on the weeks in between your yours, um, because we we did it with the um, uh, when we had all all the whole church doing it when we had uh, the, Jesus uh, the game changer, the yes, as well. yeah. So we've carried right on. Yeah, we appreciate Zoom and we appreciate this opportunity very mm. much. Yeah, thanks, guys. And as I said, it's not, um, and it's been mentioned before with others, it's not ideal. It's not what we all um, enjoy. We'd all much rather face to face, but um, it is good to be able to see people's faces. And we're all learning new things. This is the first time I've done a recording. So if this turns out, this will be really good. So, um, yeah, just be encouraged that we can still meet together, even though we're apart. Um, and these are great ways to be able to do this. I would encourage any groups that meet already to consider serving together. Find some way that you can serve together inside the church, but also looking to serve the community, the wider community somehow. Perhaps it's doing good for the neighbours that your group represents or serving in a soup kitchen together. Make it something that you as a group can talk about in the coming weeks. The fourth level, and this is the deep stuff, the fourth level of belonging is that healthy groups suffer together. 
Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 to 12 says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their neighbour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. We often pull this verse out at a wedding, and I'm, uh, I've done that as well, and it's right to do so. But it's true of a group of people who have grown in a depth of belonging together and have taken the journey to the deepest, the hardest places together. No one likes to suffer, but it's a part of our lives, isn't it? And it's a part of um, what we need to do as a group is to suffer together. We need to be people who have journeyed together over years and then go through the suffering with you. And if you've experienced that, you'll know what a blessing that is. If you've been in a connect group long enough, you'll know what I mean about this. It moves beyond sending the card and the flowers when someone is ill or giving some quick advice so that uh, you can get off the phone. Rather, to care for those who are suffering in your group is going to cost you something. Like when you drop everything and spend time at your friend's home because they're in pain and you want to be just present to them. It's going to the hospital and sitting there with the family in the waiting room, even though there's nothing you can say or do to make things better. It's helping someone raise the money for the bills that are crippling them. It's standing by someone going through a moral failure and saying, I love you regardless. I don't love the action, but I love you. You know, going through that deep pain, the suffering with a group. It shows the fullness of being loved and known by a group, accepted in the depth of mess. It's where deep belonging comes. Now that's the gospel that Jesus died for, that we would be fully known, that we would be fully loved, that we belong. My hope today is that in Christ you can find that belonging. My hope today is you can find that belonging to be known and loved in a connect group. My hope today is that in some way this church, Kilsai South Baptist Church, can help you integrate and connect in to a group that shows that you belong. A group where you'll be able to have fun with a group where you can study the word together, a group where you can serve together, and a group where you can share in the suffering of one another. Let's pray. Our Lord and God, we give you thanks and praise that you have died for us that we may have life. And that life reminds us day in and day out that we are known by you and that we are fully loved by you. God, may we have your heart of love, your heart of sacrifice, your heart of care for others that are close to us, others that are in a group with us, for our neighbours, for those who walk alongside us. May we at Kilsyth South Baptist Church form groups that become a nucleus of, of, of care for one another plus care for the community. That uh, find the, the reasoning for that care in the depths of Scripture and that can find a space to enjoy every moment. We give you thanks for what we have, the blessings that we have every day because of you. In Jesus' name, amen.
fully and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding 